Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today I am going to talk about menopause and your skin. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. Our skin is our body's largest organ so it can be impacted in so many different ways in the perimenopause and the menopause. So today I'm going to look at common symptoms, why things can develop or get worse, the causes and what you can do to help yourself. So the most common symptoms would be things like dry skin, itchy skin, your skin getting thinner and sagging a bit, things like your skin getting more sensitive, rashes, and also maybe skin conditions that you already have such as eczema, dermatitis or psoriasis getting worse. So the main cause is hormone changes definitely are, are probably the, 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 the biggest trigger. So what happens here as your oestrogen starts to fall that can have an impact on the thickness of your skin. So your skin naturally gets thinner and because of that it can get more prone to irritation, things like allergies, um, it can cause the, the itchiness too. It's also going to cause dryness and remember as your oestrogen starts to fall that can have a big impact on the way that your body stays dehydrated and very often your skin is one of the, the first areas where you will start to um, notice that. It could be to do with testosterone. Now a few women find that the opposite happens, their skin gets really oily, it gets really greasy. If that's accompanied by excessive hair growing in places where, where normally it doesn't, or you find that you get really irritable and angry, that can often be an indication that your testosterone levels are that little bit high. And there, this is what's causing these particular symptoms. Unfortunately, the only way you can really find out about that would be to maybe get a, a hormone test done to see if that's what's going on. It can be due to stress. Now, all of us are stressed in, in this day and age. You know, I don't know anybody who, who isn't in, in some way. The problem is that stress causes acidic chemicals such as histamine. So if you're getting a lot of stress, you're getting the um, excess of histamine, that's going to cause your itchy skin, um, your rashes, um, your, your skin allergies. It can be due to diet. So again, remember the physical changes that are, that are going on as your body is trying to cope with, with the, the, the hormone imbalances needs a huge amount of energy. So your nutritional needs go sky high. The problem is if you're not getting enough of what your body needs, then your body basically withholds good nutrition from the areas that matter the least. And unfortunately for us, that nearly always tends to be our skin, our hair and our nails. Our liver can have a huge impact on our skin too. And we know there seems to be some link between liver function and the skin. So if your liver is under stress, you're more likely to get things like spots and pimples. You might find that you get acne. Um, again, maybe you had it as a teenager, or you may find you start to suddenly get spots where you've never ever had them before. And very often there's a link to the, the liver here. It can also be skin products. Um, they can, because a lot of skin products have huge rafts of, of chemicals in them and that can irritate your skin. You know, maybe you've been using the same skin cream for 20 or 30 years and suddenly you find that, that it's starting to irritate the, the skin and that's just due to all these changes of, of your skin going on. So what can help in this situation? The first, I think one of the really important things is if you haven't done so already, is to go over to natural organic skincare products. Not only, as I mentioned before, a lot of these skin creams have huge amounts of chemicals in them, but some of them are known as hormone disruptors. So if you're using lots of different 
creams and lotions and potions and makeup, you could be absorbing huge amounts of hormone disrupting chemicals. What to do if you've got a favorite cream, there is a, an absolutely fantastic website called the Environmental Working Group. Um, so just Google that and that lists the majority of really common skincare creams and it will tell you what nasties may be lurking in there. So definitely go over and there's quite a few shops in the UK um, where you can get really good sort of bargain and not expensive um, natural skincare products. I get a lot of mine from TK Maxx purely because they discount them um, quite hugely com compared to the other shops. So it's a, certainly worth it if you've got one near you um, and I stock up on all my um, face creams and, and body lotions, etc. cetera, um, while I'm in there. Other thing you can look at, we do a lovely cream called Comfrey Cream. Comfrey is great for aging skin. It, it's a, a strengthener. It's a skin strengthener. Um, so a lot of people find that this is a, a nice one for um, your day, uh, evening night cream, if you like. I also use it for my nails. I find it helps to, to keep my nails nice and strong too. Look at your diet. Remember your nutritional needs go up. You can get really good skin supplements. If you find your diet's a bit of a struggle, you can get great um, skin supplements from your local health food shop and pharmacies that stock a big range of products. You can probably get them there as well. Have a rainbow on a plate every day. Plenty of protein because your skin needs protein as, as one of the building blocks. And just a good varied diet can go a long way to helping your skin. It's, it's feeding your skin from the outside, from the inside, which is really important. Remember the water, because if you're getting dehydrated anywhere, then you need to drink lots of water. And remember, plain water is really important. The other things you can look at are your sea buckthorn oil, um, which can be very helpful. Healthy fats too, because remember, if your skin's getting dry, it needs extra protection. So healthy fats in, in your daily diet. You can also look at our balanced mineral drink, um, our peri, perimenopause um, balance. This is known to help in 10 ways. So it's got things like zinc and magnesium in it. And these are known to also help with your skin, your hair and your nails. Other thing to exercise, keep moving every day because if you are exercising, if you're keeping active, then that's going to improve your circulation and that's going to help to feed your skin. Another couple of tips that can be really helpful for the skin, if you're getting itchy skin and rashes, the herb nettle is known as a really good natural antihistamine. And if you find stress is doing, if, if you find that you get really stressed and that then results in rashes, um, you know, support your nervous system. Things like um, the herb uh, passion flower can be a really nice one for that too. So I hope you found this one helpful. If any of you out there have found other ways of helping with your skin that have worked really well, please share them. You know I always love to, to read your comments and suggestions. And until then, I will see you next week.